I want to tell you exactly how we got a $60,000 TV placement not too long ago for my song, Come Back Home. I'm trying to remember the name of the show that we got it in. It was like a trailer, a Law & Order thing. I forget what it was, not Law & Order. But it was some like lawyer story or whatever, and we were in the trailer for the TV show. And it was sixty grand, which was crazy. Um, and it was in the U.S. and Canada that it got played in. And it was a song that I wasn't even sure that was a TV film song. Like I had, I had no idea that it was really that. I had just started really focusing on TV and film. And what happened was, is I was listening to the artists that were getting a lot of TV and film. I was listening to their songs, and I was listening to the, the TV shows, and really just trying to first like know my market and know what, what it is that I'm that I'm doing. Like, cause I didn't know it. And I, I had gotten TV film syncs before, but I never knew why. I never understood like the idea of syncing music. So it's like taking music and syncing it to the moving picture, right? That's what it is. It's putting your music behind a film that's going and they sync it, try to put it in the right spot. They make edits. That's why they want the instrumental version cause they do different cuts. And sometimes they want the song broken down. So you have all the stems so they can really make their own edit and, and do their own thing. And a lot of songs, I'll never forget how many times I've said this and I've heard other people say it. Oh, that'd be a good song for TV and film. Oh yeah, that'd be a good song. And, and people saying it, including me, have no idea about TV and film. They, they think they do, but they don't. You know, what I think is good and what an actual music supervisor or one of those agencies that like really pitches your songs, like they know. And I remember this one agency that I was, that I was pitching to who, who got me the 60,000 placement they started educating me and really saying like, look, we only take on songs that we think will have a lot of opportunities that to pitch to, you know, like you, that, that one style of song, it's, it's very small opportunities where we would use a song like that. We want to take songs that have lots of opportunity where there's lots of pitching opportunities. And, and when we see this could be used in multiple placements. And this is where I had one of my songs bounce where it, it has gotten lots of placements. And at the beginning, I wouldn't have thought that was a TV film song. And it, it's crazy is, is that it's like 10 plus years old. So this stuff can like really work for you for you long term. And so as I'm reaching out to these people, I'm learning and whatnot. And I remember I sent them a couple songs, like a few, and they turned down a lot of them. And then I was like, well, I got this new one. I, I think it's got that hip hop vibe you're looking for and kind of emotional feel. Cause they said they wanted like emotional hip hop. And she responded so quick and like, this is awesome. I got ideas for this. And I thought that was interesting. It's like immediately hearing the song, she's like, I can hear this in that. She's like immediately thinking all these different pitching opportunities. And lo and behold, like it was like maybe two months later, we had that massive sync with that song. And lo and behold, we haven't had a sync with that song since, but you know, you only need one 60K TV placement to really change your life, right? To, to really make an impact and to inspire you to write more. And so what's interesting though, is I was, I had already faced rejection like a few times. And how many of you have faced rejection in life and, and things didn't work out? And, and, and you thought, oh, well, I'm not even gonna send, like a lot of you only send one email. You know, I sent two or three, and I sent links, by the way, not attachments, not attachments. I had a buddy the other day send me like, I don't even know what he sent me. I haven't even opened it because he sent me an attachment and it wasn't a song, it was for something else. I'm just like, dude, what, what are you doing? You know what I mean? Anyways, uh, a lot of artists would give up, but I thought, hey, I'll send this other one. I've gotten beaten up already. Let, let's have them beat me up a little bit more. But most importantly, I wanted to show that I was in this game for the long term. And I kept on writing songs. And, 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 and I actually, after we got that placement, I said, hey, is there other artists or producers that you think I should write with, right? Like, I didn't just say like, get whipped like a little schoolboy. I was like, well, I'm here to learn, man. Like, who else do you think I should write with? Like, what producers that are turning in really good songs for TV and film? I wanna write with those people. And so I went on a mission to work with people that are, that are doing TV film stuff and learn from them. And you know what? The first couple of writing sessions were, were kind of tough. They were kind of tough. I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing. I'd written a lot of songs, but I was, I was learning how to get better. And this is after guys doing this full time for I don't know how many years. And, and, and I'm going to these writing sessions and, and, and writing all day and, and sometimes writing two songs in a day. And, 
and just coming up and tracking them and doing the whole thing in, in one day. Like, I don't think I'd ever really done it like that. And that gets done all the time. I, I, I quickly learned because I was always kind of this, this hermit dude and working on the lyrics and working on the lyrics. But I found when I put myself in a spot of pressure where I had to perform, where I had to stretch, man did that ever like cause me to stretch and grow and to perform and guess what i came up with ideas like i'll never forget being in the writing session for one of my songs called light it up and um and uh i had verses written and a chorus idea and the whole thing got changed all the lyrics got trashed and i had to rewrite them all right there on, on the spot and they're better and it's like one of my favorite songs and it's like i think the only thing we really used is the light it up and i think i had written it to like a post malone type of beat at the time and i had one vision for the song and then i get in the room with somebody else and a producer and we took it in a completely different direction thank god right but what's cool about it is the producer was even though my demo was rough even though it wasn't totally perfected he was able to see the see where it could go and sometimes you don't see where you can go in life and so you give up too soon and you, and you stop trying and you, and you don't push forward, right? And I want to encourage you to like keep pushing forward on your on your dreams and stuff because like you're going to get knocked down, man. You better believe it. People are going to say no. You're not going to have all the answers right away. I did not have them and I still don't have them. I'm still learning and I'm still getting rejected constantly. But that's just a part of life, man. And the more you accept that, the more you're gonna get farther with your dreams and you're not gonna let it offend you, number one. You're not gonna let it depress you. And you're just gonna be like, this is a part of the game, bro. Like I was talking to a buddy who didn't really like making sales calls and calling people, even though he's really good at it, even though he his close rate is really high. And what close rate means is mean after he's talked to them, he, he sells them, he, he collects the money. Right, but it's kind of nerve wracking, you know, booking the appointments and then going and seeing the person, all this stuff, because he doesn't know them. But it always goes well. But there's something inside of him that just keeps saying, like, "Oh man, like this is this is hard." But he does it anyways, and he faces his fear anyways. He does it afraid. I love that that quote. Do it afraid, man. Like who says who says you don't? No one says you don't have to be afraid. You know what I mean? Or you can't be afraid. You can't ever, you know, feel the fear and do it anyways. That's that's what you do. You feel the fear and you move ahead anyways. You don't stop. You face your fears. People that don't face their fears, they're the ones that don't achieve their dreams, right? And that's the only real difference between successful people and unsuccessful people is, is successful people have the same fears, same anxieties that you and I have, but they don't let it stop them and they don't let it hold them back. A lot of people, they get fear, they get anxiety, and then they, they, they paralyze, they stop, and they don't keep moving forward. But you've got to feel that fear and do it anyways, right? And sometimes, like I was talking to another buddy about like, why is it that like, you know, I started a new Facebook ad campaign yesterday to promote my music, and I only started at 45 bucks, yet I just paid for dinner, which was 60. Like that's, that's messed up. You know, it's really messed up. And I'm just getting really personal here is that like, you know, that, that's a joke. Like, I believe in this multi-million dollar business, but yet I'm only gonna start at $45 a day where I'm just okay to drop 60 or drop $60 on clothes and some, some, new, some new used shoes. Like, priorities are messed up here, right? Like, I, and I'm not just building a business, I'm doing it because I wanna have impact. I want my music to get out there. I want it to change the world. God has done something awesome in my life, Jesus. And so I really believe that my songs, I want them to bring hope, insp inspire, to keep fighting, and to lead them to God. Because I believe in God as the one creator, son of God, Jesus. Changed my life, showed me how to love, showed me how to forgive, showed me how to love on people and reach people, right? Like, and so, and and, and, I'm, and I'm only willing to drop $45. I'm, I'm scared to spend 60. And it, of course, we've spent up to $1,000 a day. And I got inspired by another guy yesterday that spends 9,000 a day, right? And so it's just like priorities messed up and like, it's just like, where's the faith? Where's the faith, Chris? Where's the faith, my friend, to, to step out, right? Like we, we sing about faith, we talk about faith, we, we get preached to about faith, but then when it, when it comes time to take action, 
especially Christians, are the ones filled with the most fear. And then they won't spend any money. And it drives me nuts because I came from that, that world, right? And it's just like, no, let's, let's show the world by taking action, by getting out there and doing something. And that means sacrifice. Did I have to get this new used sweater, which is brand new, but I got it used. Did I have to get these new shoes that are like brand new, but they're used? No, I did not. Um, and I'm not saying that I shouldn't have them. I'm not saying you shouldn't have things, but I'm saying like, are your priorities right for your dreams? Are, are they right? Or is your money going into things and not going into your dreams? But yet like you're scared to spend money on your dream and going for it, whether that's taking a course, hiring a coach, whatever it is, but yet you'll, you'll justify eating out, going to a movie. And we play these games in ourselves and it's like society has tricked us. Like it's okay to go out there. You deserve it. Do you really? Do you really deserve it yet? Or do you need to earn it still? So that that money is coming in so much that you can spend on whatever, right? Because like these shoes will give me a satisfaction for, for a little bit and it's great. It's fun. I love, it's, it's great. It's part of my business. It's a write off. Thank God. Cause it's, it's part of my, my biz. But, um, What's really going to fulfill you? It's probably getting your dream done and getting your dreams moving forward. I think is going to be more fulfilling knowing that you impacted people with whatever it is that you're doing, right? I know that's for me. You know, I heard a testimony the other day. Another person was was changed by uh, what we we're doing. And if I if I have impacted you, I'd love to hear from you. Make sure you leave a comment below. Subscribe below. Let me know what else you want me to cover and talk about. But like, I, I just think it's time that we we stop playing games and stop thinking so small and think bigger. Like, you know, I thought for a while and I used to walk around, yeah, we're spending a thousand a day, thousand a day. And here's a dude, 9,000 a day, right? Is he any smarter than me? Is he any better looking than me? Is she smarter? Is she better looking? No, but it's, it's and do they have the same struggles, same fears, same anxieties? Yeah, they do. But they face their fears and they take action anyways. They feel the fear and they do it do it anyways and they surround themselves with people that are going to cause them to stretch like i'm not hanging around people that aren't spending any money on their dreams i'm spending i'm hanging out with people and surrounding myself with people that are spending nine thousand a day on their dreams because they believe in it so much they're putting the money on the line and the heart follows the pocketbook okay your heart follows your pocketbook where your treasure is there your heart will be also the bible talks about that and that's the other thing that drives me nuts about Christians that, you know, don't tithe and don't give to what they say they believe and they say is the creator of the universe. And it's just like, dude, like, you know, you want people to believe in this God and, you know, you, you make up excuses that, oh, I don't have to tithe. It's like, dude, you should want to. You know, you believe that, you know, God was the one who sent a whale and swallowed a man and spit him up. You believe that three men went in the fire unscathed and the dudes that put them in the fire were burnt? Like, Christians in the Bible, we believe some pretty wild stuff, man. If we really believe that, then, like, why wouldn't we want to give to something? And if that God, same God is on our side, then why aren't we living like he is? Like, if he, we are more than the conquerors, if he really is truly for us and not against us, like it says, then why don't we start living like it and start taking some action?